Hello, everyone. Good morning, Czech. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. OK. Um, good morning and welcome to today's uh, class. Um, we are starting this new course um, uh, for this academic year. Uh, new as in this is a fresh course that we are doing, of, um, which is um, the uh, about the Holy Spirit, the person and power of the Holy Spirit. So um, if you can check in for online students, if you can check in the classwork section, we have the uh, notes that are uploaded there. Um, so we're going to be following those notes. And uh, if you're in person, you would have received the um, hard copies um, of the notes. And also e-learning, um, those notes will be uploaded uh, or have been uploaded. So you can download those. Um, Put it on your laptop or maybe in any mobile device so you can refer to it um, from time to time, even as the class progresses. So let's um, pray and get started. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, exciting um, new uh, season, this new academic year that you've given us. And uh, we just commit this course into your mighty hands, God. Uh, I pray that you would speak to us. I pray that you would um, write your word upon our hearts. And I pray that you would draw us closer, God, um, and uh, reveal uh, the person and the power of the Holy and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to each one of us. And uh, yes, Lord, I pray that you would draw us to an encounter with you, with your heart. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, so you can open up the notes, and uh, I'm just going to tell you, um, just go through the contents, uh, what we're going to look at. Uh, you know, we're going to start by looking at uh, what Trinity is all about. Then we're going to look at the person of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, and then uh, we're going to keep going. Uh, we're going to look at the power, the presence, um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, and we're going to spend a lot of time doing that. And um, also, it's going to be a very, um, uh, a very interesting session. Excuse me. Um, yeah, it's also going to be a very interesting session because we're going to be um, looking at um, uh, the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it will be very practical sessions as well. So uh, looking forward to, um, you know, uh, journeying to those, through those sessions. Uh, we're going to be looking at what anointing is. Um, and also um, uh, we're going to be learning about that uh, as well. OK, so, um, so this is the course. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty comprehensive. So we'll get a good understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, and also not just um, intellectual understanding, but also uh, you know, I know that we will have uh, many encounters um, as we walk uh, through this, um, this course, right? And um, also uh, the grading for this course uh, for all platforms, whether you're in campus or uh, online or e-learning, will be two quizzes um, and. Um, these quizzes will be 50% uh, uh, each uh, of marks, and then both will be added for your final score. Um, so one quiz will be in September, the other one in November. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll announce it. Um, it will be online. So uh, you'll have instructions and ample time to figure things out. And uh, yeah, so that's the thing. If you, if you go down further, you'll see that um, there's some recommended readings. Um, so we'd like, um, you know, these are some uh, sources, um, additional sources. We're going to be look. You're going to be using some of these for our course, like especially the um, baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and so on. Uh, we're going to be using that uh, as part of the course um, as well, right? Okay. So today <clears throat> we'll start by looking at chapter one. Chapter one. It's about the Trinity. Okay. So um, so if you if we ask that question, you know, where do we find the word Trinity in the Bible? Okay, what would your response be? Uh, which chapter, which book? Is it Old Testament? Is it New Testament? Which chapter and which verse uh, do you find the word Trinity? Okay, so after going through, we'll come out with a response. Well, the word Trinity is not there. <laughs> yes, the word Trinity is not there in the Bible. It is a word which um, 
uh, theologians have used to explain um, the triune God and the fact that he exists in three persons as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's only one God, but we see in scripture that he exists in proof and chapter and verse of him in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, we see that as we go through some of these verses, we will see that they are co-equal and they are uh, uh, eternal, co-equal, and they are one. Okay, so even before starting, we just need to uh, have a uh, disclaimer that uh, that uh, well, this is not three gods. We're not saying that there are three three gods, but there's one God existing in three persons, right? Okay, so this is how it starts. Like even in scripture, we see, we see that the Bible just plainly declares that God is three. God is in three persons. God is one. Okay, he is one existing in three persons. God, right through scripture, we'll see that. And so this session, we're going to take some time to look at um, some of these pictures, some of these images um, that we have uh, in uh, in the scripture, both in the old and the new, about this triune God, where it is very plainly stated that God is indeed three persons in one. Okay, so let's start. Let's look at creation itself. Okay, and we go to the very um, beginning. We go to Genesis chapter one, where it says, "In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth." The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So what do we see here? We see that um, this is in the beginning. We see that God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. It was void. And uh, we see that the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. If you go to verse 3, it says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So we see the Father being mentioned there. We see the Spirit of God being mentioned there. Now, if you go to Hebrews chapter 1, which is uh, referring to the same account, same creation account, right? we go to Hebrews, um, uh, and then we look at chapter 1. Okay, this is what we see. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2, right? Um, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So here we see that the Father is referred to here, is referenced here. And it also talks about the Son, the Lord Jesus. And the Son is mentioned, the Father is mentioned. Okay, let's look at another scripture, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. Okay, we're going to um, turning to Ephesians. Um, just give me a minute here. Okay, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. Right, so it says, um, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. So we see in Genesis that God, uh, in the beginning God created, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and we see in Hebrews and Ephesians where it refers to the Son, everything was created through the Son, through the Lord Jesus. Okay, So very categorically, it just states, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and their role, uh, active role in creation. So in creation, we see the Trinity. We see the triune God at work, right? Okay, what about the birth of Jesus? Okay, let's look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, and this is the verse which we normally see uh, or read uh, time and time again. Um, in church during Christmas, um, during the Advent season. Okay, Luke chapter 1, verse 32. Okay, 
Um, okay, so the incident incident is this: that the angel Gabriel has a conversation with Mary, and uh, has his encounter, and then maybe uh, we'll read from verse thirty. It says, "Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive a son. You will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus." He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of God. OK, so you you see amazing all these references. You will conceive and bring forth a son and his name shall be called Jesus. He will be great. He'll be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him throne of the father so we see the different persons being mentioned there uh, specifically then verse 35 the angel answered and said to her like when mary asked her how can this be how can this happen i do not know a man then the angel answers and said, says to her the holy spirit will come upon you you see the reference of the holy spirit then he says uh, then he says the power of the highest will overshadow you okay we can say okay referring to the holy spirit himself and then it says, therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So reference to God, reference to the, the highest one, reference to the Holy Spirit, and referring to the Son of God, Jesus. So we see in the, uh, in the birth of Jesus, in the announcement of the news of the birth of the Lord Jesus, we see Trinity being portrayed there, the triune God being portrayed over there. Okay, so we see that enough and more proof well, uh, about the Trinity. Let's move on. Let's move on to another interesting account, which is in Matthew chapter 3. Okay, so Matthew chapter 3, this is about, uh, um, this is the instant, uh, incident where John the Baptist is preaching. John the Baptist is preaching the message of repentance. He's the forerunner, and he's talking about things to come. And he's um, and so in doing that, he says, um, uh, you know, he, he's already prepared the people. He's saying, you know, I am not the one. You know, there's one who's coming after me, who's uh, who's uh, you know whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry, and he is going to baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire, and then. Jesus comes before him and he says, oh, oh, you know, I need to be baptized by you and you are asking me to baptize you and, and all that. They have that conversation. Then Jesus says, permit it to be so for it is fitting for us to fulfill all unrighteous, follow for all righteousness. So then um, John uh, loves or he, uh, he or baptizes the Lord Jesus, right? Then what happens there is that the Lord Jesus comes out of the water and it says here, let's read verse 16. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Okay. So you see Jesus comes out of the water. You see the heavens open and then the spirit of God the Holy Spirit coming upon him and as descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Verse 17, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, which means that it's the voice of the father referring to Jesus as the beloved son. So we see the son coming out of the water, the Holy Spirit coming upon the son, Jesus, the voice of the father from the heavens attesting and affirming this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased so uh, again a wonderful amazing picture of uh, the tri triune god of trinity right okay so trinity is also revealed in in the great commission and particularly the the instruction for baptism, which the Lord Jesus gave his disciples. So for that, we'll go to the end of the same book, the end of Matthew, um, uh, Matthew's gospel. We are going to chapter 28, and we're looking at verse um, 
verse, verses 18 to 20, right? So he says, uh, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus' instruction is that all authority is given to me. So you go and you make disciples of all the nations. And this is what you do. As you go and make disciples of all the nations, you baptize them in the name, you know, by the authority, by the delegated authority that you have in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you see that. Um, so uh, we, we see a couple of things here. The fact that the Lord just plainly stating, do this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he's referring to the highest, right? He's not referring to any human being. Is referring to deity. The second thing that we see is that they are co-equal. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He, the Lord Jesus puts them on the same level. Right? And, and he says, you, this is what you do. You baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we, we, we not only do we see the picture of Trinity here in the instruction for water baptism, but also we see that the Lord Jesus placing the triune uh, God or uh, placing the persons as on the same level, the, uh, the, the, the triune God, the, the Godhead at the same level. Right? So there's no, uh, you know, someone who is more powerful, someone who is less powerful. No, it's the same. One God, three persons, co-equal, eternal. Okay. Then we also see that uh, we've seen so far, you know, those four pictures. The fifth one is that God, uh, we see that the Trinity is revealed in redemption. For that, we go to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. Hebrews 9 and verse uh, 14. The Trinity is revealed in redemption. Okay, so let me just read out Hebrews 9, 14. Uh, here it, it talks about Jesus, who is the high priest, and the fact that the blood of bulls and goats cannot, you know, save a person, can, cannot, uh, uh, you know, obtain redemption. And if the blood of bulls and, bulls and goats, you know, sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more? No, reading verse 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Okay, so uh, verse 14 is, is about the blood of Christ. It's about the great sacrifice. And uh, he's saying that he's, he's comparing, you know, that, uh, the sacrifice of bulls and goats and um, and goats and calves and and he says you know this this um, uh, yeah, yeah this, this 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 is what was instituted and this is what happened but here's someone who's better there's this perfect tabernacle there's this perfect sacrifice and while referring to that you know we see the picture of Trinity in that verse through the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. So in redemption also, we see um, the, the triune God being mentioned there. Okay. Now, we are going through this for a reason because, you know, as we study the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, you know, now there could be many... Um, uh, how shall I say this? Many, many, you know, many lines of thought, or you know, many theories out there, saying that only if the Father is God, deity, or the Son, uh, only Jesus, you know, and uh, there's no Holy Spirit even, right? But we are looking at, you know, we're journeying from this Old Testament to the New Testament. We're seeing through all these scriptures that, you know, this picture of Trinity is really you know, spread out everywhere, mentioned everywhere, for us to see, for us to know, for us to be convinced in the fact that our God is a triune God. Yes, we may we may not be able to understand the whole concept of Trinity, right? We are finite beings, and yes, there is a mystery to how God exists uh, in three persons, 
how can we say that it's one God? It's not three gods, right? It's one God existing in three persons. Well, the fact is that there are many things that we don't understand, right? We see that God is infinite or God is omnipresent, right? That itself is a is an aspect that we as finite beings uh, have a grasping with, right? or sometimes find it difficult to grasp. How can God be here and there? You know, how can God engage with me? Uh, and, and even as I pray to him and when I speak to him, how can God be speaking to me and to someone who's, you know, so far away across continents and you know, the infiniteness, the omnipresence of God. Right? Um, really, uh, we don't understand all of it. So also, there is this aspect of mystery to um, the presence of the tri triune God or the, the way in which uh, he is. Uh, he presents himself to us as the triune God, uh, existing in three persons. We don't understand it all, right? But then Scripture very plainly declares. So we need to go with what the Word of God uh, declares, right? Um, so what is revealed for us in Scripture is that God exists in three persons, right? Okay. So we're going to look at um, one more, uh, uh, two more uh, verses. Um, this is in Revelation, sorry, this is in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, and also Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. So, okay, I'm just going to read from Romans 6, 4 first. Um, Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. There's, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. So, referring to the Father, referring to the Son. Right? And it's about the resurrection of the Son, resurrection of uh, the Lord Jesus. So he says, even though, even therefore, we were buried with him through baptism, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Right? So we see that the resurrect the work of resurrection happening because of the glory of the Father. So the Son being resurrected by the glory of the Father. Let's look at the other verse, uh, chapter 8 and verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Again, the Spirit of Him, through His Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Him, referring to God. And then He says that, who raised Jesus from the dead. So we see these references and we see, yeah, very categorically, very plainly stated, um, stating the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, one more. Um, two more, actually, sorry. Um, it's in the martyrdom of Stephen. Okay, so Stephen being the uh, first a disciple to be martyred in the early church, right? Um, so we see Stephen um, giving an address to his uh, audience. We see that in Acts chapter seven, and um, just before he is killed, he is martyred for Christ. So, uh, chapter seven and verse fifty-five. Okay, so this is what uh, we we see recorded here. We see, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Okay, so just before he was he was martyred, this is what Stephen saw. He was full of the Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, he gazed into heaven and he had this vision, heavens opened up and he saw the Father, he saw the glory of God, it says, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Okay, so he saw this. So we see the Holy Spirit being mentioned here. We see the God the Father. Stephen is, uh, you know, seeing, and then the Lord Jesus, the Son, standing next to the Father. So we see all this happening. Another one is Revelation five and verses six to seven. Okay, so Revelation chapter five and verse six. So Revelation five, verse six it says. Um, and I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, uh, 
having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So the reference to the lamb, obviously referring to the Lord Jesus, the lamb that was slain and then talks about the spirit of God and uh, talks about God himself. So we see all these um, uh, references, um, uh, the lamb having the seven eyes, um, having the, uh, which are, you know, the seven spirits or the seven characteristics of the spirit, spirit of God, Holy Spirit. Right? There are several other scriptures, and you can see it in your notes, which are uh, referring to, um, you know, in the epistles, John, right? Um, Corinthians, Paul writes, and Peter. And so we see that all the writers, you know, right from the writers of the gospel to the epistles, and uh, in the early church, it was considered the norm that this is how God existed, right? And this is how God is, that he is uh, the Father, Son, and the Spirit. And this is how the, the Lord Jesus revealed God to the disciples. And even when he taught them about uh, going into the world and preaching the gospel and, you know, baptizing people, he, he, he told them very clearly that this is, you need to do it in the name of God. And you're doing it with the authority. You're doing it with the you know delegated authority that God has given, and so you're doing it in the name of God. And this is who He is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, um, so this is something which is very, very foundational, very basic, and something that we need to um, you know need to hold on to. Right. The next chapter is about the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, so the fact that uh, he is God. The fact that he is uh, uh, he is omnipotent. He, the fact that he is eternal. You know, he is God himself, and he's worthy of worship. And he's also a person. Like we're saying that, okay, uh, you know, he's co-equal. He's eternal, and um, uh, he is also a person. Okay, so uh, when we, we're going to take a break now, and once we come back from the break, uh, break, uh, we're going to look at that. The fact that he's a person. Right. So we'll take a break right now. Thank you. <laughs> 